Congratulations on deciding to migrate from KiCad to Flux. In this video, I'll walk you through how to do things in Flux when coming from KiCad. We'll start by comparing the tools and their design philosophy, how part libraries work, laying out your schematic, the use of AI, and finally talk about the PCB layout. Before we get started, feel free to use the timestamps in the description to navigate the video more easily. Also, you should be able to find links to all the materials mentioned in the video down below. With that said, let's get started. Okay, when it comes to KiCad, you're probably already familiar with the setup process. Downloading the installer, running through the installation steps, and configuring your environment. It's pretty standard. You get all these different tools that do different things, one for schematic, another one for PCB layout, symbols editor, and so on. Now, comparing that to Flux, Flux operates entirely in your browser. There's no need for downloads or installations. You just head over to flux.ai, create an account, and you're ready to start designing. All you need is an internet connection and you can access your projects from anywhere. Plus, updates happen automatically, so you're always using the latest version without any effort on your part. From this user interface, you might wonder where all the different tools are. Well, Something really interesting about Flux is that it comes as one unified tool. This means that you create parts, work on schematics, and lay out your PCB all in one environment. You have these two tabs for schematic and PCB, which are tightly synced together. But before we even get into that, let's talk about parts and their parts library. In KiCad, Creating custom parts start from the symbol editor. This involves creating a new global or project-based library, saving it on your machine, after which you can begin adding new symbols. In the new symbol, you usually add new pins, give them names, and then draw the symbol. In Flux, you have several options for creating parts. You can import parts from KiCad or other supported tools, create them from scratch, or even use AI to generate parts from datasheet. In this video, we'll focus on importing parts from KiCad. If you want to learn more about creating parts with AI from scratch, check out the links in the description. To import a KiCad library or symbol into Flux, click the Flux logo, choose Import, and select KiCad Parts. You can import either a .lib or .kicad symbol file. After selecting your file, Flux will open it and ask you to confirm the import. If your library contains multiple parts, they will all be listed here. I'll go ahead and import my part. It will take a moment to process and then open the imported part in a new tab. By default, Parts you create or import are private to you. That means no one else on the internet can be able to access them. If you want to share them with others, you can adjust the permissions by clicking the share button and selecting whether others can view or comment on your part. Let's take a closer look on what you are seeing here. These are called terminals. Think of them like pins in KiCad because these terminals are the ones used to connect to other components in your schematic. You can add names to these terminals, set the pin number, and so on. These terminals are by default attached to a pad in the PCB view, so it becomes very easy for you to edit the pad shape and size to create custom footprints. One important thing to remember when it comes to importing parts is that both the schematic symbol, the footprint, and the 3D models are treated as separate assets in Flux. Let's start by talking about the symbol. Once you hit the import button, Flux will create an SVG symbol of the part which looks exactly like your KiCad schematic symbol. However, you won't be able to see it visually here 
until you publish the part and use it in a different project. When it comes to the footprint and the 3D model, you need to import them manually. You do this by going to the inspect panel on the right, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you will see the asset section. You can click it to see what's already there. To add more assets, you go to manage, add item, and then find the footprint and the 3D model in your machine. Click open, give them a second to be uploaded. And now I can change the ID to something more intuitive. And that's it, click done. You can now change from schematic to PCB. You'll see all the parts that are linked to the terminals we just looked at. Under the objects tree list, select the footprint object. On the right side, find the object specific rule, click add, and then search for assets. Click add to add it. Once it's added, click the box and select the ID name we gave to our asset and you should see the pads change to a correct representation of the footprint. To publish the part so that you can use it in other projects, go back to the Flux logo and click Publish to library. This will let you know that the part will now be indexed in the parts library and you can change the permissions if you wanted to. Click publish and the publishing will begin. It usually takes a few seconds and it will be ready for use. Let's now take a look at how you find parts and use them in your project. In KiCad, finding parts involves loading the symbol and footprint libraries. Here you search for a part you want to use across the global library and the project libraries. Once you find the one you want, you click OK and that's it. In Flux, it's a bit simpler. Your parts library is always available on the right side of the editor. So adding components is a bit quicker. This library contains all public parts that are available to you from other Flux users, as well as your private and public parts. You can search for a part and there are filters to help you narrow down your search. Once you've found the part you need, just drag it onto your canvas and you're ready to start wiring. We've already seen that placing a component onto your canvas in Flux involves finding it in the parts library and then dragging it onto the canvas. We have the inspect panel on the right where you can find the project description, project properties, and other useful attributes that relate to the project. And selecting a part pulls information that relates to that part, like datasheet, part number, manufacturer, and so on. A particularly handy feature in Flux is live pricing. If you have a part number, Flux automatically fetches the latest prices from distributors showing you availability and whether the part is still active or has reached its end of life. Connecting parts in Flux is very easy. Similar to KiCad, you click on a pin of one component to start the wire, move your cursor to the pin of another component that you want to connect and click again to press the end of the wire. There's no grid in Flux. Instead, you use these alignment guides to help you align wires, traces, and part placement in both the schematic and the PCB editor. In KiCad, you are used to using labels to identify and connect different points or nets in a schematic. However, when it comes to Flux, you use net portals, which act in a very similar way. These net portals are found on the parts library and to use them, you just drag and drop them onto your canvas. Connect them to a net and rename the portal. You could choose to use either power net portals or just net portals depending on the scenario. But just know that they work the same way and are basically interchangeable. During this phase, you could brainstorm with Copilot on different design ideas, refresh your engineering knowledge, or even learn a new concept in the context of your design. You could also ask Copilot to review your design and check for possible issues, create test plans, 
and a bunch of other cool things. Once your schematic is fully captured and you're ready to start doing the layout, you simply change the tab to PCB and you have all the footprints and air wires ready for you. In Flux, you don't generate a netlist and then import it into the PCB editor as you would in KiCad. Everything in Flux is synced as you do it. That means if I go back and add another part onto my canvas, Flux automatically adds the associated footprint onto my PCB layout. Setting up your board in Flux involves using object-specific rules. Rules are used all over Flux and it's a way to control or set things. If you want more information on that, I've linked I've linked our docs, which go way deeper than we can in this video. By default, Flux starts you off with a four layer board. If you wanted to change this in KiCad, this is usually done by going to the board setup and going to physical stack up, then change the layer count from there. In Flux, you first make sure the layout is selected Go to the right side and find the object specific rules. Click add, search for stack up on this window. Then you want to click add again. Now I can change my layer account by just clicking here and choosing from this list. You even get some stack ups which are pre-built for some of the most popular manufacturers out there. If you wanted a more advanced control of your stack up, you click this pen icon and that brings up the stack up editor. Here you can even start to configure micro -vias. To get more information on micro -vias, check out the link in the description. After you've finished setting up your board, you can now begin to do the layout. This is done by simply dragging components around. Again, you can use this alignment guys to make sure things are nicely aligned with each other. To begin routing, you click on these little dots, which are called routing touch points, move your mouse to the other pad that is connected to the same net and click to complete the trace. One final thing I want to talk about is ground and power planes. In Flux, as long as you have components connected to ground, you get this ground plane by default. Power planes, however, are not by default you add them using object specific rules. And I have linked some resources on the description to show you how to do just that. If you want to see a start to finish tutorial on how to design a PCB from scratch in Flux, check the video on the right. If you enjoy this content, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, until next time.